Hi everyone, uh, welcome. Um, I just hosted the uh, Women in Python breakfast this morning and and uh, thank you to everyone who came. It was, we took over the restaurant, it was pretty amazing. And um, welcome everyone to PyCon. Um, I'm going to talk today about diversity in Python and how it is, it's actually about untapped resources and finding, finding new resources to tap. Um, a bit about me, uh, by day I am a Python web developer. I do Python and Django consulting for Cartwheel Web and RevSys. And I, I love Python, I also like other things. Uh, by night, I'm an open source advocate. Uh, I'm best known as the president of PyLadies or Python Ladies. Um, I'm a core dev of the open source projects Django Packages and uh, Packaginator renamed Open Comparison. And I'm also, um, I also like to do art. I do digital art and sculpture. Uh, I show at the Hive Gallery. And I'm the fiance of uh, Daniel Greenfelder. Hi, Danny. Uh, just as of two weeks ago. And. Um, <laughs> I, I met Danny at uh, PyCon 2010 United States. I, I attended on the diversity grant, and so um, diversity means a lot to me. It's di Python diversity has changed my life. So, um, so first, I'm going to talk about untapped resources. Why we need to un why we need to tap them. Once we once we find the resources, what do we do with them? What do we do with this bandwidth? Um, then I'm going to talk about recruiting, and finally, a bit about uh, Pi Ladies, the um, my group, and yeah, Python Ladies. So, so Python diversity. What is diversity? So it diversity means what, what everyone expects, a uh, variety of race, age, gender, sexual orientation, disability, religion, and uh, geographic location. And having all these different types of people makes Python amazing. Um, it goes beyond that, though. You can think of diversity as, um, as just having Pythonistas who come from different backgrounds. So you have, you have the, the beginner coders, you have the students, you have creative types. Some people get into Python because they, are, uh, com they come from computer graphics and they, they start with writing scripts. And, and you also have writers, photographers. Um, Py the Python community also benefits from having, having um, activists with passion about free software and Linux. And then um, people who come to Python from scientific computing and, and hardware. And finally, the um, entrepreneurs are another group, people who, who write web apps and, and games. Um, Another type of diversity is, is expertise, what language you come from. And, um, and most of us here aren't just Python-only experts. We, um, there's all sorts of experts in here. And um, you know, just because you're a Python guru doesn't mean you can't also be a JavaScript guru. So um, this, this is the type of diversity that makes Python amazing, that makes the community amazing. So we, I think we need it. Um, and so do we want diversity? Um, well, obviously I'm, I'm arguing for it. Um, I, I think that diversity, um, so, so we, as, as, a Pyth as the community, as the Python community, we need to be innovative. And if we want to be innovative, we have to have new ideas constantly coming in from all sorts of places, and uh, having those ideas push ourselves to grow. Um, here I'm talking about the entire ecosphere of Python packages, so not, not just Python core. It's, uh, Python is, is the whole community. It's, it's all, the, all the packages on PyP. Um, so sometimes w when you have too many ideas coming in, it, it can be a bit overwhelming, and um, and you know, it's do we really want ideas, new ideas coming in when we have um, 
we barely have enough time to implement all the things we want to do. And you would think, you know, most of us are, are pretty bright. What, um, do we really need more people in the Python community? Um, but it's not just about ideas. Um, innovation is 10% ideas and 90% implementation. So, and implementation is dependent on having bandwidth to, to implement the ideas that, that you want to create. Um, the opposite of innovation is um, stability or leaving Python as is. Is that the opposite? It's, I, I feel like when I look on, um, on GitHub or Bitbucket, at, at projects, and I see that a project hasn't changed since 2009, I don't see that as stability. I see that as a, a project that is falling behind while the rest of the world moves forward. So in order to grow, we need to keep innovating. So if we want to innovate, let's tap our resources. Um, here are some easy places to start. There are 52% um, of the world is women, and um, and so that's, that's over three billion people, and I, I can bet that out of those three billion, you've got, you've got three million of them who are super, super smart people. And um, why not get as many of them as we can into Python, those, that, those cream of the crop. There's also, there's also a lot of um, shy men who should be contributing more. So it's not, diversity is not just about women. It's, it's about being open and, and reaching out to everybody who can con contribute. Um, there are a lot of students who, who are looking for ideas for thesis projects. And um, why not get them involved with the Python community? Why not, why not get them hooked on open source and have their, their thesis project? You know, it might as well be, be something useful that, that, um, that can go beyond their thesis. Um, and finally, there are a lot of people at, um, at non-Python user groups like Linux user groups and JavaScript user groups, all um, who who like Python a lot, and um, why not tap their resources, um, make the community richer? So now, suppose we we tap. Suppose we find untapped resources to tap. What do we do next? Um, how do we get them contributing? What 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 do they do? Um, so, since I'm up here talking, um, why not start with, with my own wish list? Um, we, we can start with, with everyone else's wishes, but since I'm here, I'm going to go into it. So, in other words, um, what would I do if I had a, an army of smart Python developers who were, who were excited to develop anything that I could ever want and, and who would just had unlimited bandwidth to give me. So a disclaimer, I, um, I'm speaking broadly across a lot of topics. I've done a lot of research, but, um, but I don't necessarily have in-depth knowledge about, about everything. So first off on my list is image processing. Um, we have the Python imaging library. It is it is great. Um, raise your hand if you if you use it or if you've ever installed Pill. Okay, so that's that's a lot of you. Um, it's so um, while it's great, I think that I think that we could do more. And if um, if you look, so I I have friends who work for um, some of the entertainment companies in Los Angeles doing um, doing graphics programming, and and I. I asked them a bit about this, and what I found was that um, was that a lot of these companies build their own in-house um, image processing libraries because Pill doesn't do enough for them, or it doesn't do exactly what they want. And I I feel like when you have when you have a situation like that, that is an opportunity to um, to to develop other things or to or to build upon pill and um, this is something I, I wish I had time to work on unfortunately I don't have all the time in the world and so this is where untapped resources come in um, there are a lot of a lot of 
university students who, um, who are looking for interesting things to do, who are, who are super interested in, in computer graphics, computer vision. Um, and there's also a lot of developers and photographers. There's a lot of overlap between the two. Um, and finally, um, if, you, if you know of someone who, who wants to get noticed by a big graphics company, go and encourage them to, to work on some image processing work in Python. Um, next up on my wish list is Python in the browser. So um, why does it have to be JavaScript? Um, I, I love Python. I, JavaScript, I, I like JavaScript, I, but I, I really love Python. I, I wish I could write Python code to manipulate the DOM and, and just, you know, do everything. And, um, and there's, there was the Sculpt project, which was um, uh, allowing you to write Python that would get converted to JavaScript. It was an interesting idea. It, um, it lost momentum, but it's, it's still out there. It's a good starting point. Um, I, I brought this up to some Python friends of mine, and, um, and I, I, I was told, you know, why don't you just go, go look into CoffeeScript? Um, it's Pythonic. It'll, it'll do what you want. Um, and so I looked into it. Um, and so, OK, so here, so, so in jQuery, you, you look at the, so here's the document ready function. Um, this is an improvement over just plain JavaScript. And um, next is the CoffeeScript version of it, where, um, where, where it's, it's more Pythonic. You have, you, you have the, um, the code block indented, and you have, you have some white space after the ready, and um, it's, you know, it's, it's a, I, I could see why people recommended it to me, but there's, there's these, these characters, right? There's like a, a dash and a, a greater than sign. Those, those are not Python. What, what I want is, is actual Python using standard Python constructs. You know, your, your colon and your, just your, I, I want, I want Python in the browser script. I, I think if, if people could do coffee scripts, um, other people should be able to make my Python in the browser scripts. Um, so yes, we need an active Python alternative. And um, again, this is one of these things where, um, where it, it takes time and it takes energy to do it. And um, we've got untapped resources. We, we ha there are so many students who are looking for world-changing projects. There are also, um, you, also, if you go to hackathons or sprints, there are people who are looking for ideas to work on. So there, there are people. It's just, it's just a matter of, um, of mentoring and connecting. Um, next up, cross-platform Python for mobile. So, um, so this, this sounds a bit extreme, right? You, um, you write Python, you have it, you have it work uh, on every single mobile platform, your iPhone, your Android, et cetera, um, and it just works, and maybe it, it turns into whatever language you, you need. And uh, it, sounds, it sounds crazy, right? It sounds, it sounds like a, a dream goal that you can't really achieve, but you look at, look at what JavaScript folks have done with PhoneGap. The PhoneGap project is um, JavaScript that you can, you can write once, and it works, it works across all mobile platforms, and it's, um, it, it gets turned into native code for, for each platform. Um, and it's, it's a project that came out of a hackathon. So a bunch of guys got together one, one weekend at, at a hackathon and, um, and implemented this for, for Android and iPhone, and, they, um, and partly for BlackBerry. And, and now they've, they've, they've been tackling the other platforms one by one. Um, why can't we do this in Python? Um, games are another really interesting area, um, and, and I think it's another area that we, need, we ought to look at a bit more. Um, 
the future is mobile and we need to catch up. And I know that we are all very busy and we, we've got, you know, those of us who are, who are already involved with open source projects can't possibly start a new project and devote full attention to it. And, and so the way to go is to, to recruit untapped resources to the Python community. Um, and we can't just recruit them and, and tell them, hey, do this. We actually have to care. We have to find new people who would be interested and mentor them and, and encourage them. Um, next up on the wish list is more Python packages. So um, before I go into this, I want to mention that there, uh, yesterday I checked the Python package index and there are 16,000 plus Python packages. So I, I think that is amazing. I think, I think, I think it's, you know, it, it's just really mind blowing. Um, and I, I want to push this a little further that I, I think that, so I was thinking about how many Python developers in the world there are. And um, I, I, I mean, who knows, right? Uh, I would guess that there are at least 50,000 Python developers who, who, have, who, who consider themselves intermediate to advanced or who, who consider themselves capable of taking a snippet of their code that might be reusable and putting it out there to the world. And if, if all these 50,000 folks could do that, then there would be 50,000 packages out there. And so my question is, um, how can we get every person in this room to release a package on PyP? Raise your hand if you've, if you've released a package. So keep it up, let's see. Okay, so I don't know, maybe about 20 to 30 of you. So um, whoever's released a package, I, I have these um, Hershey's Kisses that I brought here from America. <laughs> And um, these, these just came out, they're uh, the aerated milk chocolate kind, and, and I'd like you to come up after and, and get one, so. Um, so, yeah, if, um, and for the rest of you, I, I suggest looking into releasing a package. Um, just check out the docs. Um, so, to, to go into this a bit, I, I have a friend uh, in LA, super smart woman, uh, PhD in philosophy, linguistics expert. And she came to uh, one of the women's Python workshops that, that I've been co-organizing in LA. And, um, and the same month she came, she wrote, she wrote functions to help her analyze uh, some of her writing. She's, she's a very prolific writer and she, um, and so she wrote a syllable count and a automated readability index function. And these are very useful, you would think. And, and how would, the question is, how, how does someone like this who, who, who has written some reusable code take the next step and, and put their work out there on PyP? And I, I feel like if you, can, if you can write a function, you should be able, you know, you, you you save the file, you've, you've got a module, you've got a Python module, and, um, and the, next, uh, the next mental leap is, if you have written a Python module, you should just be able to put it out there to release it to the world. And so, um, so the next, that leads into the next item on the wish list, um, just lower barrier of entry to packaging. I, I feel like we're, we're doing a really great job that the, already that the, um, if you look at the Hitchhiker's Guide to Packaging, it's, it's really comprehensive and there's, there's a lot of pages of detail in there. I, I guess, um, I guess what the one thing it could use is, is a bit of a uh, further explanation of the leap between writing a module and turning that into a PyP package. Um, and and uh, Jacob Kaplan Moss of Django has, has written some articles about documentation. And one of his main points is, is that 
uh, when you have good documentation, it explains the same thing numerous ways. So you have, you have your tutorial, you have, you have a, a longer in-depth walkthrough, you have, you have reference docs. And, um, and so what else might help? Um, I would love a cheat sheet uh, about how, how to package something up. And, and um, not just for myself, but to be able to pass it out to everyone who's here or everyone who's, who's at the, the Python user groups that I attend. Um, another thing is um, maybe a web form that generates your setup.py file, which you need for your, your Python package. And finally, maybe, maybe some hands-on workshops to help people get more of their work out there. Um, so this is just the tip of the iceberg. There, there are a lot of possibilities. That, and um, if you're interested in hearing more of what I have to say, um, I'm giving a talk next week at Kiwi PyCon called Python and the Web, Can We Keep Up? And so there'll be some interesting bits. Um, a quick summary so far. We, so we need to recruit diverse new untapped resources to the Python community. And we need to lower the barrier of entry to contribution. So, so both in terms of helping them, give them ideas, giving them ideas uh, about what to work on, helping them get started, and also teaching them how to package. Uh, and if, if we can do this, Python will flourish. So now I'm going to go into recruiting. So, so here I've laid out a bunch of wishes and the types of people who, who would be good candidates for new contributors. Now how, how do we take the next step and recruit them? So um, let's say you're leading a Python open source project and you need more developers. How do you go about getting getting new contributors. So um, basically, you, you get people to show interest by showing interest in them. So you volunteer for as many Python events as you can, things like this conference or, or just your local user groups. And if there are no events in your area, you, you start new Python user groups and, and meet new Python developers. So it's, it's pretty common sense, right? Um, the same technique works for any specific type of developer. For example, let's say, let's say you're working on a, some sort of Python web project and you, and you need JavaScript experts. Um, you can't just wait for them to come to you. You actually have to go out to the JavaScript meetups and volunteer to present and volunteer to help and just make friends in the community and get active. And, and if there's if there's nothing like this in your area, maybe, maybe start some sort of Python JavaScript event. Um, same thing works for getting more women into your project. It's, it's a very common problem in open source that, um, that a project will, will have maybe, maybe zero to two women and, and will need more contributors who are women. And you, you can't really just expect them to come to you. You have to... You have to do. You have to go out of your comfort zone a bit and and do some volunteering and recruiting. And um, I suggest leading Python w women's workshops or or having your company host a a Python ladies dinner or just being active. It's and um, I mentioned the IRC channel here because. Um, because I know there's there's been a lot of crossover in pilot in pound pi ladies with um, with various uh, various core developers of different open source projects um, and and it's as a result you've um, these projects have gotten more women participating in them I know um, some of the some of the pyramid core devs have been hanging out in pound pi ladies lately and as a result. Um, the LA chapter of PyLadies is is talking about hosting a the Pylons Con slash Pyramidicon for 2012. So something you'd never expect, right? So 
recruiting in any context. So I, I'm talking a lot about open source project recruiting. Um, it's, it's interchangeable with company recruiting. So, um, so think of the best Python developers that you know. Chances are they are, they are well-known open source developers. And think of the companies, the Python companies that, that everyone dreams of working for. The best ones are the ones who actively support open source. Um, a case study is Mozilla. They, they, lead, they lead women's Python workshops. They, they developed the PyStar curriculum. They, um, they've been actively participating, sponsoring all sorts of Python advocacy things. And as a result, um, they have top developers flocking to work there. Um, similarly, you have Cars.com, which is uh, in particular the, the LA branch, has been extremely, extremely active in, um, in, in hosting and sponsoring Python women's workshops and hackathons, and not just, not just providing a venue, but actively having team members stay, c come in on a Saturday and a Sunday and, and, um, and mentor, and it's, it's been amazing, and um, this, is, this is something anyone can do. So, so if, you, if your company has, is not active in advocacy yet, this, this is a great opportunity. Just, you know, go out and find ways to participate in Python advocacy. Um, so I know that the, the sponsors for this weekend's conference are doing a great job. Um, I, I'd like to see more companies being involved. Um, now I'm going to talk about uh, Python ladies or, or Pi ladies, the growing women's Python movement. So, so Pi ladies is along the lines of all these other groups. So there's, there's, there's women's groups for, for different languages, for content management systems, for for different flavors of Linux, for, for web servers and window managers and um, entrepreneur groups, uh, general developer groups. Um, and it's, you know, it, this, this year is um, the year that we started Python Ladies. So, so it's, it's about time that Python got in on, on this movement. And, um, Part of the Python women's movement is just, it starts with turning smart ladies into Python ladies. So, so running workshops to get more women involved with Python. And there are existing curriculums that you can use that are fantastic. There's, there's PyStar and there's Learn Python the Hard Way. Both of them are free and um, all it takes is, is one instructor and a venue to, to host something and then and then you can pass it off to other people, and it's it's just amazing. Um, uh, another part of this is is the fact that not all Python ladies are beginners. That you have, you know, you, there's been a lot of focus on beginners, but it's there. Are, okay, there are there are 35 women here today, and I'm I'm sure that that most of them are not. Beginners. Um, I mean, I don't. I don't know, but um, but I think that um, there's just there's so many ways that um, that the that women who are already involved with Python can can take the next step and become leaders. And um, and in LA, we've been we've been doing a lot of this mentoring, helping helping women who are already intermediate or advanced Python developers uh, get more active in open source, get more active speaking at conferences. And, and it's, um, we, we've been getting together and, and helping each other practice talks. We, we helped each other um, just submit talk proposals in the first place. Um, so so let's, let's help let's help more women become leaders. It's, uh, and don't forget, I'm, while I'm sp speaking specifically about women, this, this is applicable to any kind of underrepresented group. 
So things are getting better. So I want everyone who feels like a minority in here to, to just stay positive and, and focus on the things that you can do. And um, we have some amazing numbers for, for PyCon. I, I mentioned the, um, the 35 female attendees and um, some more things are happening all over the world. So it's, it's really great. So now, do you need more convincing? Um, Python advocacy is actually a lot of fun. So I'm going to go into some photos, just show you some of the real faces beyond, behind Python advocacy. So, so this, a lot of these photos are, are, from, uh, are from the local group, but you can, you know, you can do this everywhere. Um, so women's Python workshops, um, here we have um, just photos of, um, of several of the, the co-organizers and mentors, and then photos of some of the, the people attending. Um, All-day Python project events, we're talking about, um, so here's photos from, from, the, from sprints and hackathons. Um, it's not just about sitting and coding, part of it is also about um, bonding and making friendships and finding people that, that you can relate to in the community. And so, um, so we've had Python ladies nights and social hours and um, there was the breakfast this morning. Um, so people who, who are into diversity bring new ideas and here is, uh, here's Catherine talking about diversity of Python web frameworks. Um, Here's Sandy giving a talk on advanced testing techniques with, with Django. Um, here's Jackie and Katie um, the, who are presenting to the DC Python user group uh, in an effort to start a DC Pi Ladies chapter. And finally, this is a photo from one of our sprints. This is this is the future of the Python community. Um, just all sorts of people, um, all sorts of backgrounds, and just everyone having a lot of fun writing Python. So, in conclusion, um, come and find me if you are interested in talking more about any of the ideas I, I brought up today, um, whether it's teaching a, a workshop, not necessarily for women, it can be for any type of workshop. Um, if you're interested in forming a local Pi Ladies chapter or just any sort of women's group, um, I'd love to talk to you. Um, if you are interested in um, getting more contributors to your open source projects, come find me. And if you just wanna chat about Python, um, come and find me, so thank you.